Churchill. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scanning Pens. Um, I'm going to talk for maybe 20 minutes or so, and then we're going to have a quick demo session at the back and the front here, and then we'll come back and we'll have the last 10, 12 minutes of Q&A if you've got any questions, and then feel free to have more tea and coffee if you need. So I'm going to talk through a little introduction, recent advances in uh, pen scanning technology, the reader pen, which is the white pen, and um, the orange pen, which is the exam one. And I'm going to give you a bit of feedback that we've had from schools. Uh, we only have a bit of feedback so far from Irish schools because it's relatively new, but I will tell you what I know. So I established this business uh, 14 years ago, roughly, and the technology was much more basic than it is today. However, it was still very good for its time. So the pen scanners back then were twice the size and uh, twice the weight. They had AAA batteries in the back, and they had memory sizes of about 16 megabytes. In the last two or three years, we've managed to get pens now that have um, cameras in the end. So they're really fast, really accurate. Um, they've got built-in speakers, they have headphones that plug in, but they now have four gig of memory on board. So that means you can have really nice voices, you can have dictionaries, you can have storage for text and audio. And basically these pens are now fit for you know, 2018, whereas the pens we were selling two or three years ago were 14 years out of date. And uh, they were still great, but you know, slower, a voice like Stephen Hawking, and you know, people today expect something that delivers instant uh, results for them. So um, we're based near Bath in Wiltshire, and we have an office up in uh, Shropshire too. We've recently opened also uh, offices in Australia, Canada, and the US. The Pens consist of reading aids, so pens that help people to read on their own, and line scanners, which are more for capturing information. So if you're in a bank and you need to capture lots of information and get it into a spreadsheet or into a document, line scanners are quite useful for data entry. And then we have dictionary pens, which do translation. The, probably the most interesting part of what we do, and probably 90% of what we sell are pens for helping people with reading. So I mean, I think, people would initially think, gosh, dictionary pens for translating, that sounds exciting. And there are lots of people learning languages, and we can translate Chinese to English, English to Chinese, all the rest. But it's actually the reading pens which are the most interesting and are the most well received, because we're giving young people and adults the ability to access text anywhere, anytime. No need for Wi-Fi, no need for computers. And it's just a very simple way of um, decoding, like you mentioned. And actually, I had a thought about, um, we were talking about assistive tech, I had two little sort of, I don't know, analogies. Apparently, I think it's Socrates, he could never write, but yet he wrote quite a number of uh, documents and books. And that's because he had other people around him who wrote things down. And I think that's quite interesting how you know, a lot of people throughout the time have managed to achieve great things, but not necessarily have the skills to achieve that. So they've had support from other people or other systems. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, I went to a conference recently and someone was saying, describe assistive tech in one word to do with exams. And they said, well, some of you have got glasses on tonight, so go and sit an exam paper and I'll take your glasses away and I'll put them in the corner. And how well are you going to do now? So I think things like assistive tech, like Donald was saying, really help level the playing field and you know, people would, yeah, if you took your glasses away, they'd say, hang on, you're not allowed to do that. So it's about just, while not uh, infringing on the other people taking the exams, it's about supporting and, and bringing up those people to make it level. They're not being tested on their reading ability in a geography exam. They're being tested on their knowledge of geography. And if they can't access the question, they can't answer it. Um, I'm going to run through, I've got some slides, I'm going to be quite brief with them, but these are traditional ways of uh, breaking out some barriers with dyslexia, you know, getting yourself organised, time management, coloured overlays. Is everyone familiar with coloured overlays for helping dyslexia? I was going to say, how many people are teachers here? Okay. And parents of dyslexia? Perhaps. 
Um, are you uh, secondary teachers mainly? Yeah. So I've just added another slide here, or another image, audio. So audio is kind of a modern age. Well, I say modern age, it's, it's what we're doing, but in fact, audio has been around for a long time. And the next slide, I saw this recently on Twitter, and I just thought this really encapsulates the power of audio, which I've never really appreciated before. This says here, 85% of what we learn, we learn by listening. I just hadn't a clue until I saw this slide that so much of what I've learned in my life is from listening. Um, so that means reading and other kind of interactions with things are you know, less, much less. So the power of audio is immense and um, you know, things here like improves comprehension by 76%. And this makes sense to me that uh, people who hear things can understand it, but sometimes if they see a word, um, like conscious, they just can't decode that word. So it's really important to be able to help them to see those words and they understand them. I've got a quick, I've got a couple of short videos. Here's the first one. Some sound. Much good faith, but sir, I hope this is the first page. Now, the thing of you can take to be on the iPad, or maybe an online picture, is it is that you take it away the text that you're with. Uh, it's not going to your wife yet. Yeah. 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 Just start again as if I for my child, Faith, sir, and open it at first page. It worked now, earlier. About the new text speech on your iPad or the online tree. Is it me? Technology. <laughs> from the text I think you'll get the gist anyway, so. You can copy that text. If you want to be good, this is the laptop, a smartphone man. A pen like this makes life a little mm. easier. If we put this into the dictionary function, I have this away. I can clean. Read through desktops. Let me just try something different. If I can strike it. Yeah. So I'll have a word for you uh, for my child, Faith, sir. And open this. Okay, so I think we're going to. This is Sean Douglas from Codpast. And uh, he. It's called Codpast because that's a play on the word podcast. So he's a dyslexic podcaster. And he provides regular, interesting. Uh, insights into how people can work with uh, dyslexia. Sorry, what's his name again? He's called Sean Douglas, Sean. and he's called he's from Codpast, and he's quite famous actually now. Jack, we can maybe make that video available to people afterwards. If Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the website. So let's keep going. But I do, he does come back in a minute, so we might get to see him in a minute if the technology works for us. So um, the reader pen is this white pen, and it's battery operated, so it's totally portable. It's got a lithium battery and it lasts about eight hours. Store up your questions for the end, because I'll be happy to answer any questions like that. Um, instantly reads a word, line, or paragraph of text aloud. I would say this pen's more for someone who can read, but gets stuck in individual words. This isn't for reading a whole Harry Potter book. This is for you get to the word Quidditch, and you quickly scan over that word and you hear it aloud. When you hear the word aloud, you know what it is. Um, as mentioned earlier, you can use apps and you know, iPads and computers and all sorts of stuff, but I think this is a really simple way of accessing a book and supporting someone, particularly maybe a young reader who, you know, they've got a book open in front of them, they just get to a word they're not sure about, they scan it, they hear it aloud, if they're not sure of what it means, they look up the definition, and um, it just gives them that independence to do it by themselves. So um, there's a, a dictionary on board with 240,000 definitions. The exam reader pen has no dictionary and no storage function on it, which is very important. That's what makes it exam proof ready, as it were. The pens have a human-like uh, digital voice, which makes them nice and easy to hear. We will constantly be updating the voices, adding in maybe young people's voices, uh, male and female voices and maybe even different accents in the future. These are things that we're currently working on. There's a line scanner inside here, which um, allows you to store information, and then you can later put it onto the computer. 
and it works with PC, Mac, or Linux, and there's no software. It's literally like a USB stick, so you plug it into your computer, and the files that you've captured on the pen are displayed on the screen in front of you. You can also use the pen while connected to the computer, so you can plug it in, and you can scan straight to Excel or Word or any sort of text-to-speech uh, application that you might be using. Um, and finally, there's a voice recorder. So if the student is uh, maybe struggling to take notes in a lesson, they can leave this pen recording the teacher at the front and it will record the teacher and then they can play it back again with headphones or they can put it onto the computer so they get near exam time and they can listen again one more time to the teacher talking about that you know, exciting lesson and re reminding them of the things they need to remember. And as I said, it's rechargeable by USB. So typically exams are not for testing reading ability and I mean, a, a test or examination is an assessment intended to measure a test may take as knowledge, skill, aptitude, physical fitness, or classification in many other topics. Exam accommodations are for assisting children or candidates who have recognized difficulties accessing exam papers. Huge numbers of people struggle to take exams, and we're not talking just about people with accommodations. There are the people who didn't qualify for accommodations. They still may struggle to access what some of those words are. There's people with English as a second language who maybe they just don't have the background knowledge. They've not lived in Ireland for that long and they are still sitting an exam and they need support. And today, I don't, I'm pretty sure we can't support English as a second language, can we? We don't, English, this is for combination only, it's not as English as a second language, is it? No. No, it's maybe. It's, you, sorry, just phrase that again. Do you get language. paper dictionaries if you've no. got English as a second language? They, yeah, yeah, there's a, a dictionary that they write. So you can use your own, your own you can use an English to Polish dictionary yeah. or whatever it might be. That's what you have to apply for, you just can't use it, you have to make that yeah. application. But I just wanted to mention them because they're another category of person who may struggle with accessing um, papers. We need to make it easier for struggling readers to take exams. Um, we need to relieve some of the stress and pressure of that exam environment, particularly sort of like an English um, exam. You know, if you don't pass these exams, this is your whole career is on the line here. It's so important. This is the biggest day of their life. If they don't get the exam, uh, yeah, they, they're going to have to retake it or maybe um, they're going to struggle at the next stage. So. We've got to really put in place methods for helping them take exams. A couple of current uh, accommodations that are, are used are human readers and computer readers. These are traditional accommodations, I'd say. The human readers, a uh, separate room, you need to have a trained reader, you can't just pull someone off the street. Uh, you need extra invigilators, maybe extra rooms. A computer reader, you need a readable PDF, you can't just magic a paper onto a screen, it has to be put in and it has to be readable. You need a suitable computer, so that's a computer without access to dictionaries, without access to the internet, without access to documents. Certainly in the UK, people can't sit next to each other uh, in the computer suite taking exams. They have to be one bay apart, and you know, the number of computers is always a bit of a limitation given the number of children that have accommodations. And you need knowledge of that software. You need to have been using the software that you're using on the computer regularly, uh, otherwise you're not going to be sure what all the buttons do. So a few of the uh, anxieties for the schools, do you have enough rooms for all the uh, students who require separate rooms for the human readers? Uh, how much is it going to cost to train the staff to be ready? And there's a word there, a phrase called opportunity cost. That's a teacher's taken out of another classroom to come and read to one student in an exam. What's happened to that class, which was normally having a teacher there? That classroom may now be faced with the children watching a film or being amalgamated with a second class to, to help during exam time. So these are some of the anxieties. Um, computer reader, is the exam in a PDF readable format? Do you have enough, do you have enough computers for the students? Is the autocorrect switched off? Yeah, these are all things for the IT guy at the school to think about. You know, they have to be really organized. And then there's anxieties for the candidate. So with a human reader, why am I put in a separate room? So sometimes they may prefer a uh, separate room, but other times they may feel, why am I being separated from my friends who are in that big sports hall or example? 
who is this guy who's come in to read my exam paper today? This is the most important day of my life, and some guy's just come in off the street to read to me. Or that's the geography teacher who's I've never liked or has never liked me. Can I ask him three times to read the same thing to me, or is he going to start getting frustrated that I'm you know, wasting his time? I, I, I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure readers read many, many times. But you've got to think of these young people and the anxieties they go through on this their most high-pressure day. Um, the computer reader, why am I putting in a separate room? I'm not sure what all the buttons do. So it's just some of the things. Mm -hmm. Now, let's give this other video again and see if this is going to So I'll run through, and um, this obviously all worked at home. Much fun. It worked early when I tried it, but... So I've got the videos on my desktop, so at the end of the presentation I will try and show them to you again if we have time. I think I've only been eight minutes so far, so I think we're okay for time. I'll we? try and get that working while you're doing some of the demos maybe. And the well, that would be good too, we'll have a play about with it. Yeah. Doesn't get you out of helping with the demos though. Oh. <laughs> so um, now we're going to talk about this exam reader pen. So again, a reminder, the white one is the reader pen for everyday use. This includes a dictionary, includes storage, includes a voice recorder. This orange pen is locked down for exams, so when you turn it on, it's just got text reader. It's the only thing it does. It reads in five languages, English, French, Spanish, Italian, and German. This one reads in English, French, and Spanish. I'm sorry we haven't got Irish on the pens. Um, something we will be thinking about, and uh, well, I can't make any promises to you today, but um, I think the fact is, you know, English is quite prevalent, is that a good word, um, for exams. So we can at least support some of the children, or most of the children, by taking a lot of their exams. But at the moment, we can't support the Irish exams, Irish language exams. Um, these pens have been in UK schools now for more than two years. And they've also been in uh, schools now in other countries, too. It's a growing trend. Um, the, the reason, OK, I'll come back to why they're popular. But um, more than 20,000 schools have been used in the UK. It's mainly uh, secondary schools, GCSEs, A levels. And I would always say to you these things aren't for everyone. It's about finding the right solution for the individual. So some people are going to prefer or be better off with a human reader, some people are going to be better off with a computer, computer reader, and some people are going to be, some young people and adults are going to run with this because this is just going to be with them all the time. It's in their pencil case, quickly scanning over words they're not sure about. So it's, well, we offer a free 30-day trial to schools, colleges and universities, so you can try these pens out with the children, see which ones it works for, which ones it doesn't. You know, if some people have maybe dyspraxia, it's not going to perhaps work for them. If people, can't, if people have got no vision, then they're not going to be able to use it because they can't see the line of text. So it's about finding out, you know, sorting through, filtering those children or adults and working out which ones are going to run with this and uh, it's going to perhaps change their life. Pens, it's good to have them as part of your normal way of working. So this is the great thing about a device like this, you can have it everywhere. So you can be using it constantly. You learn the limitations, you learn, oh, it's not going to scan over handwriting and read it aloud. It's not going to scan over text that's that big because you know, the width of the uh, pen is just that much. Um, and you're going to know very quickly which, which things you want to use it on and how you want to access um, the information. Remember, the pens can be used by a number of people. They don't have to just be used by one person. I mean, some schools do sign them out and they label them and they give them to children to use day and night. So when they go home and do their homework, they're using them. Um, but also, you know, during exam time, do come in. So, um, so during exam time, ten children could use this. Um, not at the same time, but to do you know, ten different exams. So um, this is a valuable resource that can be used throughout the year. It can be used in the classroom, at home, in the exam hall. So the cost is around two hundred and twenty-five euros, which. Yeah, some of you may think it's quite high, but actually, you can get a lot of use out of it. And, um, Sorry, you didn't say that. Say it. You didn't say that. I didn't mention that. Yeah. Okay, 270 euros. Okay. That thing is 23. 23% of that? Yeah. Very good. 
I can't control the VAT, but no, um, no, no, no. Like schools because they're not considered. Schools don't pay VAT, or they claim they, it back. They, they can't. No. They can't claim the VAT back. No. Yeah. Really? There is a there is a facility. I think it's going to have a 61A form to claim back. Individuals can claim back VAT, um, VAT from the revenue, I believe, uh, for just technology. Um, and we've given advice about that. There's advice on our website about that under assistive technology. I might see if I can print that off so people can pick it up and delete it. So that's a lot of. I mean, suddenly in the UK, the schools, all the state schools, claim back their their VAT. So that's quite a lot of uh, money that. Irish schools have been I guess, but, but maybe the government just funds them a bit more effectively to cover the that. I don't know. It's not my specialist area. Um, so the JCQ were the first people to say that this pen could be used in exams. I visited them about seven years ago initially, and um, they, they didn't necessarily run with it then. They came back three years later, and they, they decided, actually, that the children will really leave school soon, and they can't always have a human reader sitting next to them. Otherwise, they're like, hey, where did my human go who's been with me for the last 10, 12 years? And we need to actually be empowering young people and preparing them for the, for the real world. The second reason they were excited about something like this was to do with the resourcing of exams. Some schools, from my understanding, have 50 children taking one exam who require help with accessing the questions. And this is in the UK, I can't speak for exams in Ireland. That puts a real pressure on the school um, financially because they have to have trained readers, they need to have lots of separate rooms, and it yeah, puts pressure on the resourcing too. So um, the JCQ have actually said something quite interesting, which is unlike any other example. They've said anyone can use the pens without accommodations um, because they think that anyone who can read, wouldn't want to use one of these anyway. And so that's something they've done. And they've, so they've said this SENCO, or the exam officer, doesn't need to apply for access arrangements. It's a centre delegated thing. But all the other exam boards, so we've got Cambridge, am I right with Cambridge there? Cambridge IB, so International Baccalaureate. Um, this is independent school exam boards in the UK. Uh, South Africa, Australia. This is most of the examples in Australia and some of the examples in South Africa. And now the um, State Exams Commission in Ireland, uh, you apply for accommodations in the normal way as you would for any other accommodation. And, um, and then you can use these pens if you get accepted, obviously. So I've put a, a slide up just about what the State Exam Commission have said. And I'm just going to read this last paragraph to you. Um, an exam Reading pen is a small handheld device which students use to scan words, phrases, or sections of the examination paper and have the text converted to speech, which they listen to using earphones. Unlike ordinary reading pens, an exam reading pen does not have the functionality to explain the meaning or to translate words, as this functionality would undermine the integrity of the examinations. Candidates may have a reader or reading assistant for any subject that is not compatible with an exam reading pen. If anyone would like these slides later on, feel free to um, get in touch. I'm happy to let you have the slide deck. So the exam reader pen is a popular solution. I think I've already explained to you why. <laughs> there we go, I got ahead of myself. But yeah, students will leave school, and you know, resourcing the exams is tough for schools. Now, I've got another video. <laughs> Uh, we'll come back to this nice Welsh teacher who is getting on well with this exam reader pens in his school. So, um, the role of the same uh, So, uh, earlier this week, I found this bit of feedback. This is actually from a university. This some of you may be interested in the university. As a university student. So this is Southern Illinois University Edwardsville students. Um, so this chap here, uh, Mr. Dominic Dorsley, has said that if you are dyslexic or have difficulty reading, you should not have to wait for others to read to them. 
This reasoning prompted Dominic Dorsey II, Director of Disability Support Services, to introduce a new resource. The CPEN exam reader audibly reads the words when the pen is scanned across the paper. The pen works in either direction for those who are right-handed or left-handed. It also reads in English, Spanish. We, I like this quote. We are also looking for new and innovative ways to remove gatekeepers, he added. With the old ways of having someone read to a person with reading difficulties, he or she is dependent on that person. This way provides more autonomy. And in fact, I was speaking to uh, a mother from Texas recently, and her son did the PSAT, which is the pre-SAT exam, very important exam for, I think, 16-year-olds. And he went to sit in his exam. He had, he's very dyslexic. He had a human reader come to read to him. The human reader was a um, Spanish speaker, and this young man said after his exam that he actually struggled to understand quite a lot of what the Spanish first speaker, I don't know which order to put those words in, but was saying to him. And that's the, one of the issues with human readers is it's a bit of a lottery. You never know who you're going to get on, your day, on the day. Are you going to get someone who uh, is going to be easy to understand or kind or... And, and that's also the other side of the coin too, because people aren't allowed to give too much intonation and ref inflection, that's a great word. So the great thing about these pens, because they haven't heard the sound yet, but because they do have a digital human-like voice, every child using these pens is getting the same sound you know, coming into their ears. So it's really fair. Jack, just time-wise, that's, that's at seven. Just wanted to give people plenty of time to... Okay, I, I've nearly finished it. So, um, a couple of minutes of feedback from uh, schools in Ireland. Wesley College, has everyone heard of Wesley? Um, one of my students who has a lot of difficulty with reading really took this pen and used it a lot in the exams. He did much better in the exams than was expected, and his parents were delighted. They have just ordered a reader pen with the dictionary function for him so that he will have it all the time for studying. I'm not sure, I've, that may just be like an internal school exam, so just clarifying that. And then Glam, 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 Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, they trial the pen back at the BET conference, which is a big education technology show we attend every year in London. And they brought the reader and exam pen back to the schools with some students who are entitled. Uh, these students use the pen in class during the trial. They notice the students become more independent and more engaged. And actually, this is something we're finding. We're doing a pilot in a big research school in Birmingham. And two of the comments they made to us straight away, when we're looking for attainment improvements, they came back and said behavior and confidence have both improved because the children were now engaging more in the lessons. They were able to access the information. Um, so my conclusions are look out for struggling readers, uh, help them get help accommodations so they can take the test like their peers. Uh, scanning pens offers a free 30 day trial to schools, colleges, universities. Parents can order online and have a two week returns policy. So that gives parents an opportunity to try the pens out. If it's not suitable for little Johnny, they can post it back and they've lost nothing as well. That concludes my um, little talk.